So let's start with the remaining part of the chapter. And uh, yes, yeah, so we have come to the interesting part where things have uh, started to move. And uh, yes, yeah, so now let's see what is uh, going to be Evans' plan of escape. Will he be able to, or uh, will he, uh, you can say, outsmart the authorities? And as we said, the criminal is always two steps ahead of the authorities. And in this case, yes, Evans, it seems, was well prepared. And uh, he'd already you know, planned everything perfectly for his escape. So the exam here, it was just a, what uh, you can say, a cover up for what he actually wanted to do. So what have we read now till here? So who is Evans? He's a convict, he's in prison. He wants to pay for the German language exam, the O level. All the authorities, everybody is on high alert. And as we had read how his uh, cell had been bugged any sharp object removed, and he's also been asked to look neat and clean and uh, take care that there are no posters or anything on his room, right? And uh, then Vigilator also coming, he's been fixed thoroughly. And once again, also when the governor had a doubt, again in his mind, again, uh, McClary's things were checked, right? So the examination began, it was supposed to start at 9.15, it got 10 minutes delayed, so it began at 9.25. So when the exam started, how was it? Yes, so McCreary introduced himself to the you know, candidate and they were sitting on opposite desks and uh, McCreary opened the envelope, gave him the question paper and the sheet. Okay, right, so the exam it started and uh, right after 10, 15 minutes, there was a call from the examination board. So two calls were received, two important very calls received. So one was, from the board, examination board. What was it about? It was a correction in the question paper. And uh, yes, so some certain objectives had changed. Gold lion to golden lion, that is what the change was there on this page and everything. And uh, so McCleary also speaks very clearly. This is the center number. This is your subject. And uh, write your roll number here, there, just like an invigilator would. Right, so this is one call, there's a change in the question, some correction has to be done. Then secondly, there was a call for the prison van, right, and to police officers. So it's a perfectly normal request, but the governor is on very high, you know, like alert that day is very, you know, tense that nothing should go wrong. But uh, yes, so it's, it's a perfect normal call and he's, uh, you know, thinking that maybe I'm overthinking. In fact, he calls back the examination board but the line, it is constantly engaged. There's a beep sound and he's not able to get through. Obviously, it's the day of the exam. So if they are calling him to tell about the correction, maybe they're calling other centers also. So it's quite above suspicion. Then even he makes a strange request, right? One is that, yes, the officer. So Jackson was there inside. So he's asked him to be removed so that uh, like... Uh, you know, Stephen was there, right? So that he should not feel uncomfortable and one person just staring at him and standing behind him while he's writing would make him very uncomfortable. So the governor agrees to that. He thinks we're being maybe extra, you know, cautious that way. Then he wants a blanket to wrap around his shoulders. That is also perfectly normal because the cell is not towards the sunny side. It is, they're quite cold that side, right? So yes, so he wants to wrap it around his shoulder. It is granted. So all of these things have happened. There's nothing suspicious about anything. It seems as if they are normal routine things which are, they have been asked. Nothing out of the, you know, extraordinary there. So yes, so the, all the requests are obeyed. And the governor, yes, he says, yes, we can. And... Uh, right? So then after that, you know, like, yes, yeah, so when uh, five minutes are left for the end of the examination, then uh, like uh, as McCleary announces five minutes left and he tells him that you have to just hand away answer sheet and all, there is a call for Stephen, right? So he goes, the governor has called him, he's very excited, okay, the governor has called me. So he goes to attend the call. And then when he comes back, the exam is over, right? And he escorts McCleary to the gate, okay? And uh, 
when he looks at him, he does find that it seems as if he's grown taller and his, uh, you know, this accent is very prominent, the Scottish accent, the way he's speaking. But then, of course, he does not think much about it. Then what does he do? Just like, you know, like he has uh, that uh, worry or concern in his mind that have I done everything right? Some last minute concerns. So he goes over there and what does he see in his cell? That, uh, you know, like with a blanket covering him and the black habit and everything there, right? The beard and the hair. And it seemed as if McCleary was wounded and he was lying wounded in the cell. Right, so everybody panics. Everybody starts running here and there, and uh, the prison is at high alert. The governor comes, officers come, and immediately he says, "No, don't call the ambulance. Call the policeman. I know where he has gone. I think so." And he's just showing them the question paper. Now, see, this is very important here. The all these little things that are going to happen. What is there on the question paper? There is a superimposed note, right? So these are things which here, there is a superimposed paper on it, which is saying that, yes, so it is three minutes before the exam. That is very important and all, you know, like there. So even the governor is not able to get it very clearly because of uh, the German, which is written, right? And yes, so as McCleary is wounded and as he's wiping his face, uh, his whole handkerchief is full of blood uh, and it's just soaking with blood, right? So he's uh, like, uh, naturally everybody is worried that what is this happening? And uh, so they take uh, McCleary to the hospital, right? So they're going to take that. So this is what we have read till now. Now, so please note, as I told you, some of these things, which are going to happen, they are what? Some actions or things. So I'm telling you again and again, red herrings, you know? These are some actions which have been done to distract the authorities from the main purpose. What do the criminals need? They need time, right? And how can the time be gained? Or how can they get the time by distracting the authorities by putting them on another track okay so we are going to be investigators we're going to be very alert now now let us see what could have happened what was the strange thing that McLeary had which generally will not find an examiner carrying with him or in which later carrying with him to the examination hall McLeary had a rubber tube Right, so like a small tube, it was a ring, and he said, I need it because I have a problem. He has hemorrhoids, and uh, so to sit on it and to feel comfortable. So, once again, the authorities do not deny that request. Okay, so when we are going to see all this with all this evidence that we have, how was the crime committed? Who escaped then? Right, so uh, the officer escorted McCleary, Evans was inside. But then how has it happened then? Where did Evans go? Who's inside? Who went out? This is the big question. And this is what we are going to read. And this is what we're going to find out. Okay. So please uh, look at your screens. Right. So let's continue. So here, the wounded McCleary is showing the, the governor the question paper. Those of you who were not present in the last period yesterday, I'll just tell you here. And uh, yes, here, this, this was what was superimposed, you know, like in German. And then now what is happening? The policeman is coming and they are, the detectives have arrived and they are going to take McCleary. McCleary is lying wounded. Right, so it's all covered in blood, and uh, so they have to, you know, uh, yes, uh, deal to his injuries also. Now let's continue. Detective Superintendent Carter swung himself out of the passenger seat and saluted the governor. What the hell's happening? And turning to McCleary. And turning to McCleary, Christ, who's hit him? But McCleary cross, cut across whatever explanation the governor might have given. Elsfield Way officer, I know where Evans. 
So he's there, you know, McCleary is very confident. It seems he knows where Evans has gone, right? How? He, he's there showing the question paper. And maybe, yes, if he had seen it, now he saw it. If he had seen it early, he could have alerted the authorities at that time. Now he is showing them. And it seems he knows where Evans has gone. He was breathing heavily and leaned for support against the side of the car where the imprint of his hand was left in tarnished crimson. There's blood everywhere. In bewilderment, Carter looked to the governor for guidance. What? Take him with you. If you think he'll be all right, he's the only one who seems to know what's happening, right? Even the governor is confused. What has happened? So take McCleary with you, right? And uh, yes, uh, he'll tell you what is going on. So we don't know what is happening clearly ourselves. Carter opened the back door and helped McCleary inside. And within a few seconds, the car leaped away in a spurt of gravel. Ellsfield Way, McCleary had said. And there it was staring up at the governor from the last few lines of the German text. From Ellsfield Way, drive to the Headington Roundabout, where, yes, of course, the examinations board was in Ellsfield Way, and someone from the board must have been involved in the escape plan from the very beginning. The question paper itself, the correction slip. So now, what did McCleary tell them? Ellsfield Way. Now, when the governor read the German text, the German paragraph, what did he realize? Where is the examination board? The examination board is also in Ellsfield Way. Okay. So what is he thinking? That someone from the examination board is involved. Question paper, correction slip, phone call, all that. You know, he's just putting two and two together. The governor turned to Jackson and Stephens. I don't need to tell you what's happened, do I? His voice sounded almost calm. Or in its sketching contempt. And which one of you two morons was it who took Evans for a nice little walk to the main gates and waved him goodbye? So now he's catching those two officers, Stephens and Jackson, and he said, who took him to the main gate? It was me, sir stammered Stephens, just like you told me, sir, I could have sworn. What? Just like I told you, you see? What the hell? When you rang, sir, and told me to. When was that? The governor's voice was a whiplash now. You know, sir, about 20 past 11 just before, you blithering idiot, man, it wasn't me who rang you, don't you realize? But what was the use? He had used the telephone at that time but only to try unsuccessfully once more to get through the examinations board. So, what is the information we have? the last moment pe jo call tha, that was to tell Stephens to escort McLeary out. The governor had not made that call. One more thing we have come to know now. So, this case is getting even more interesting, right? So, even seems to be very, very smart. He shook his head and in growing despair and turned on the senior prison officer. As for you, Jackson, how long have you been pretending you've got a brain? Huh? Well, I'll tell you something, Jackson. Your skull's empty. Absolutely empty. So, Governor Bond Gusseh, Jackson Pei. Jackson being the senior one, should have taken responsibility. Sent Stephen. And in fact, yes, so Stephen, poor thing, is not to be blamed because it was a call from the governor. It was Jackson who had spent two hours in even cell the previous evening. And it was Jackson who had confidently reported that there was nothing hidden away there. Nothing at all. And yet Evans had somehow managed to conceal not only a false beard, a pair of spectacles, a dog collar, and all the rest of his clerical paraphernalia, but also some sort of weapon with which he'd given McCleary such a terrible blow across the head. Okay, now, so what is the new information that has been found? What has been, uh, you know, like, uh, yes, observed now? The governor did not make any call requesting Stephen to escort McCleary. And yes, so Jackson was there, the more experienced person. He should have done that. And it was Jackson who had gone through Evans' cell, did not find anything suspicious, right? But then in spite of so much of alertness, in spite of checking again and again, 
How was it possible? Look at it, McLeary was lying wounded, wasn't it? Where did the weapon come from? Then, yes, all the paraphernalia there, everything which was there, you know, the clerical paraphernalia. If McLeary had gone outside, there was a McLeary inside. How did two McLeary's happen? Right? Big question. So, yes, so let's find out. A prison van backed alongside, but the governor made no immediate move. He looked down again at the last line of the German to the Headington roundabout, where you go straight over and make your way to New Graben, New Graben, where it was? New something, New Grave, never heard of it. There was a war grave somewhere near Reading, but no, it was probably a code word or, and then it hit me, Newbury. God, yes, Newbury was a pretty big sort of place, but. So now the governor is reading the passage very, very carefully. And then what is there? That you'll go to Headington, right, the roundabout. After that, you're going to go to New Graben, okay, right? And uh, so where on earth is this new grave, new grave? Where was it? There was a war grave somewhere. But where is it? Then it hit him. No, it is Newbury. So see, the, yeah, the governor knew German and it came handy. It came useful for him and he was able to understand what was there mentioned in the correction or you can say on the question paper. He wrapped out his orders to the driver, Sait Aldate's police station and step on it. Take Jackson and Stephens here. And when you get there, ask for Bell, Chief Inspector Bell. Got there? So you say you go to this police station, take these two officers with you and get Chief Inspector Bell. He leaped the stairs to his office three at a time, got Bell on the phone immediately and put the facts before him. We'll get him, sir, said Bell. We'll get him with a bit of luck. So now he's explained. Let's see, this was the instruction. So, right? So there was a message for Evans. This is what you are supposed to do, right? And Evans left the question paper behind. Do you think it was done on purpose? So why would he leave the question paper behind where there were instructions given? He could have taken it away. Why did he leave it? Another red herring, isn't it? Yes, so what is this here? Why do you think he did it? Is it clear till now, all of you? Is it clear? What has happened? Yes? Clear or not? Give me a yes or no, please. Tell me. Yes, class. Is it clear? Anybody? Right. Yeah, Lagan is 